All right, hello everybody. This is Gigi from Kauai Community College. This is a follow-up video of um, proof using mathematical induction, um, PMI. Okay, now uh, if you haven't already, you should watch my previous video for the introduction of what PMI is and how it works. Now here, I want to go into details of actually how to write a proof. Okay, so um, suppose we are sitting around pondering, well, what is the sum of um, all multiples of 3? Say 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18 and so on up to n. Okay. Now, what if we are sitting around pondering that? Now, um, the previous lesson before PMI is um, finite differences, and I think that's a pretty cool thing to be able to look at the pattern, a finite pattern, and be able to find um, the um, equation for it, you know, like uh, be able to manipul manipulate the variables and find um, what the formula would be for the sum, right? So uh, let's just take a look and see how we would be able to find that sum. Um, so first, when n is, I'm going to make a chart here, uh, when n is 1, okay, uh, the first sum would, would just be 3. When n is 2, the second sum is 3 plus 6, which would be 9. And then the third sum that you see here is um, would be 9 already, plus 9 more. That would be 18. And then the fourth sum, meaning when n is 4, the sum is 18 plus 12 is 30. And then when n is um, 5, 30 plus 15 is 45. And then when the n is 6, you would have 45 plus 18, which would be 63, and so on. And then the question here is, if you go all the way out to n, Okay, what would the nth sum be? Okay, now if um, you have that magical, powerful brain uh, and you can look at 9, 18, not, you know, 3, 9, 18, 30, 45, 63, and you can tell what the pattern is, that's awesome. Now, the tool that we would be able to use to try to figure it out a pattern, if the pattern is a polynomial, is finite differences, right? So we've learned that in a, um, a previous lesson. So when you do take finite differences, the, um, you are relying on the calculus concept of um, derivatives, right? So let's um, take the slope or the difference. Um, change in y over change in x, and change in x really is just 2 minus 1 is 1, so change in y is 6, 6 over 1 is just 6. So in short, if we list these in order, we are just taking the differences, right? So 6, 18 minus 9 is 9, and then 12, and then 15, and then 18, and so on. So it looks like that's not a constant yet. Um, the, the concept is if it is a polynomial and we continue to take the derivative, at some point it is going to be a constant, right? And 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, that looks linear because it has a constant rate of change and that constant rate of change is 3. Okay, so if this level is a constant, then this level must be linear. So our pattern must be 
a quadratic. Okay, so we would say now Sn as the sum Sn is going to equal to a n squared plus b n plus c, right? So we realize now that it takes that many steps to get down to constant. So our pattern, the sum that we're looking for, the sum of these multiple of three, is going to be a quadratic, a polynomial of the second degree. Now, how do we go and find that? Uh, we will use substitution, right? So um, let's say we we plug in when n is 1. When n is 1, we will have um, 3 is equal to uh, n squared is 1, so a plus b plus c. And when n is 2, we will have the second sum, which would be 9, is equal to 2 squared is 4, so 4a plus 2b plus c. And when n is 3, we would have 18 is the sum, is equal to um, 3 squared is 9, 9a plus 3b plus c. Now we have a system of equations to solve for, um, and elimination would be the best method. So I'm going to first take um, equation number 2 minus number 1 to get um, 4a minus a is 3a, 2b minus b is 1b, c minus c is gone, and that's the reason why we would take 2 and minus 1 to eliminate one of the variables. And 9 minus 3 is 6. Okay, now I have an equation with two variables, so the next thing I would need is one more equation with the same variable. I already used 1 and 2, so now let's use um, 3 and 2. So 9 a minus 4a is 5a, 3b minus 2b is b is equal to, because c minus c is 0, that's not there, that's the whole point of um, this elimination process, and 18 minus um, 9 is 9. Okay, now I have an equation with two variables, I can go ahead now and eliminate b. So by taking this equation here um, on the bottom minus the top, so I will have 2a is equal to 3. Therefore, my a is 3 over 2. So if this is my a, I'm going to go ahead and put that into here so that I can find b, right? So 3 times 3 over 2, I'm going to say that is 9 over 2, plus b is equal 6. Now, 9 over 2 is 4 and a half. 4 and a half plus what is 6? So b must be 1 and a half, or I would say 3 over 2. Now that I have both a and b, I am going to go ahead and plug that back into my first equation, number 1, right here. So I would have 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 plus c is equal to 3. That's 1 and a half plus 1 and a half is 3 plus c is 3. So c must be, c must be 0. Okay. So this right here, um, the equation that we are looking for, for the sum, we would go ahead and plug in A, B, and C. Um, so the sum of multiples of 3, right, um, the nth sum of multiple of 3 is, um, would be 3 over 2A squared not a, I would say n, because that's my variable right there, 
3 over 2n squared plus b is 3 over 2n plus c, c is 0. So, and if we factor that out, we will have, um, factor that out and write a common denominator of 2. I will have 3n times n plus 1. So, um, we are saying the sum of um, multiples of 3 um, is 3n times n plus 1 over 2. So, finite differences is great in finding the, um, the formula for a pattern that is a polynomial, right? Now, um, I started out saying I'm going to show you how to write a proof. So, um, you know, someone might be skeptical and say, well, if you come up to them and say, oh, hey, look, um, 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus so on plus 3n is going to equal to, oh, that should be 3n, um, because we're looking at multiple of 3, is equal to 3n times n plus 1 all over 2. Okay? And they say, well, prove it for all n, for all natural number n. Well, PMI, or principle of mathematical induction, um, is a way to prove a pattern um, that will work for all natural numbers. Okay, so there are two steps in PMI, the initial step and the induction step. Okay, so here is a proof using PMI. And I'm going to show you the structure of how to write this proof. Okay, so step one is the initial step, which would be to verify that the pattern worked for some initial value. In this case, the initial value would be uh, n equals 1, right? I mean, you could, the, the initial value could have started out at 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, but in this pattern, we are starting out with 1. So, uh, verify that it works for some initial value. Okay, so step one, uh, the initial step, your job is to verify that the formula that we're looking at works for and um, some initial value. Okay, um, so when n is 1, the left-hand side, when n is 1, the left-hand side, you just have 3, right? That's the first. Um, the right-hand side is going to be 3 times 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 all over 2. And that is equal to 3 times 2 all divided by 2, which is 3. So we have left-hand side equals to right-hand side. Um, the equation works for the initial value of n equals 1 in this case. Right? So that works. The induction step is to go ahead and assume that this formula works for kth term, some arbitrary k. Now, the concept is if it worked for k, then um, k plus first term becomes true, plus the initial value is true, then induction would say that the formula would be true for all n, right? So here, the second step is to go ahead and um, verify the induction step. Now, what does it mean to verify the induction step? Assume 
the statement that you're trying to prove for the case up to k term. Okay? That means, so maybe that's not a, a good um, language there. I would say for um, an arbitrary value k. Okay? What does that mean? Okay, now proof is a um, kind of like writing an essay. So you need to use words. You're not just doing algebra, right? You are using a proof is an argument essay. So an argument essay will state the reason and then explain the reason and then go ahead and summarize what you argued. So um, my reasoning is my induction, my initial steps work. I'm going to show you that the induction step also works. So what does it mean then to assume that the statement is true for the arbitrary k? We will say that means, okay, it is true that 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus so on all the way up to 3n is equal to 3n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so we are assuming that it's true for uh, k, not n, um, up to k term. Some arbitrary k, that works. So you assume already that this is true. Okay, now what is your job? The induction process said, assume that it's true for k, assume that it's true for k, we need to show that it's true for k plus 1. Okay, so I just said we need to show, so go ahead and, and go ahead and write that in our essay. Um, we need to show that the statement is true for k plus 1. Okay? That is to show that, what are we supposed to show? What is our job here? We're supposed to show that 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus so on plus 3k, that's up to k term, right? Plus the next one, which is 3 times k plus 1 is equal to, so if it works for k plus 1, it should be 3k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 all over 2. Okay, so I'm writing this statement for um, when we have k plus one. Okay, that same statement there. And I'm writing that um, for k plus one. Now, so that is our job. Our job is to show that it works. This, this statement here is true, right? So I'm going to go ahead and simplify the right hand side just a little bit so that it's easy to look at. This is 3k plus one times k plus 2. Okay, so I'm supposed to show that the statement here, the statement 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus so on plus 3k plus 3k plus 1 is equal to that. That's what I'm supposed to show. Now, how do we prove an identity? Um, we either start on the left hand side and somehow using our math to show that it equals to the right hand side. 
Okay, so in this case, we'll do an algebra. Uh, start with the left, show that it equals to the right, or you can start from the right and show that it equals to the left, or you can start from both sides and meet somewhere in the middle. Well, in this case, because, because we have assumed that this is true, because we have assumed that this is true, okay? Uh, I am going to start on the left-hand side because I see that same expression right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the left-hand side. Okay, so the left-hand side is equal to 3 plus 6 plus 9 and so on plus 3k plus 3k plus 1. This is actually equal to, we know, the thing that I highlighted in green. We know this guy right here is 3k times k plus 1 all over 2 plus 3 times k plus 1, okay? Now, I am supposed to arrive at, all right, so again, our job is to show that it equals to the right-hand side. So we are going to um, use some algebra here, get a common denominator. Oh, where did it go? Use a common denominator. Okay, so we would say that will equal 2, common denominator is 2, and I am going to multiply this out and combine like terms. I will get 3k squared plus 3k plus another 3k, um, um, actually plus another 6k because I'm going to get this to be 6 over 2, right? So that would be... 3k squared plus 9k plus 6 over 2. Now the numerator has a 3, so I'm going to factor out a least common multiple there. 3k squared plus 3k plus 2 all over 2. And then I'm going to factor one more time. And we can see that this is going to be 3k plus 1, k plus 2, all over 2, which is the right-hand side, as needed to show. Okay, so these should have, if we really want to pay attention to, we will say which equals this, right? which equals this, which equals that, if we really want to pay attention to our um, grammatical um, essay there, uh, for the essay there, okay, as needed to show. So we already showed that the initial step worked, and we show that the induction step worked. Therefore, okay, so we would, we would say, therefore, um, the principle of mathematical induction um, proves that the statement 3 plus 6 plus 9 and so on up to 3n is equal to, okay, is equal to that statement that we needed to show, 3n times n plus 1 over 2, that statement right there, is true for all values n. And that is how we write a proof using mathematical induction. Which I was trying to See paper there, but this statement should actually be your conclusion statement in your essay. Okay, and that is um, how we write a proof using mathematical induction. So, what are the what are the elements?
of, of that proof. Um, I would say first is the initial step. Um, and you should not be afraid of um, just writing words because this is um, you convincing the reader, right? So um, go ahead and write the words. You, you may actually just use this template to um, write all proofs using mathematical induction. Um, initial step, verify the, f the formula works for some initial value. Induction step, and then you go and you verify, and then the induction step, assume that the statement is true for some arbitrary k. That means, okay, and then you go write down what that means uh, when it's true for some arbitrary k. And then we would write, we need to show that the statement is true for k plus 1. And that is to show, so you write down what you need it to show, right? So write down that statement that you need it to show. And then what does it mean to show um, that that statement is true for um, um, k plus 1? Well, you do what you got to do to show that it's true. In this case, you have an algebraic expression, so you're going to start on the left-hand side and make it equal to the simpler one, which is the right-hand side, right? So uh, we that is our job, to show that it's true. So we start on the left, we work our way through, and we show that it equals to the right as needed to show. Therefore, so this is your conclusion statement. Therefore, the principle of mathematical induction proves that this statement is true for all values of n. Okay, so um, all that are highlighted in blue should be like your template and how to prove by mathematical induction. All right, that is it.